Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 7th of July, 2011. 52 years ago this day, the planet Venus occulted the star Regulus. This is an extraordinarily rare event. So the first part of the trivia question today is, when will the next such occultation occur? In fact, Venus being occulted by the Moon, which is a much easier target, is uh, quite a rare occurrence. So the second part of the question, what year will the next occultation of Venus happen? The answer will be given at the end. According to the GOES X-ray sensor, we had a sea flare. But does that mean we're going to start a new burst of activity? Well, we've been fooled twice so far, so let's assume we're going to be fooled again and say yes. These flares are rather sharp. So that would be indicative of some growth in an active region or an appearance of new spots. So let's take a look at the sunspot picture and see what's been going on. Region 1244 is just visible on the limb, but it's too foreshortened to be able to tell whether there's been any major growth there. There were signs of decay in the trailing part of region 1243, but overnight there's been a new spot growing just north of the leader. So that may be the cause of the flares that we've been seeing. We have three new regions on the disc. Unfortunately, the one in the southeast that I was so keen about yesterday uh, disappeared very quickly and never even got numbered. However, interestingly, about Sun Center in the south, there is a tiny spot at very, very high latitudes appearing. And I'm wondering if this might be a harbinger of the outburst of activity that I've been predicting in the southern hemisphere for some time now. There are one, possibly two regions coming over the northeast limb. They look fairly normal active regions but we don't have enough information on them yet to see whether they're growing or decaying, so they could be the source of this activity too. So we have lots of candidates to choose from. So first let's take a look at the time development of these regions to see if any of them have been changing sufficiently rapidly to explain the flares that we've seen. In the Sunspot movie you're probably going to have to go to full screen mode to be able to see the development in these regions with, because the spots are so small. However in the Magnetic movie, I'd like you to particularly concentrate on the three new regions. The one in the south, which is remarkably far south, it's actually over 30 degrees south, which is quite rare. And then the two on the northeast limb. Now they're rather foreshortened, so you have to be a little careful about how the spots appear. But try to see which ones are growing and which ones aren't. My suspicion is that the one in the south is not going to amount to very much, because these high latitude small regions usually don't. But watch the sun prove me wrong. Well, if you want some excitement, then we should look at the Transition Region movie. There's usually something interesting going on there. Indeed, that's the case for yesterday. Remember that prominence that I predicted would lift off just above Region 1244? Well, it did. So I do get some forecasts right. I've made a magnified movie of the details of that for you, so you can see it. It is absolutely beautiful. Note how twisted and contorted the field lines are. And as they rise, material starts to flow back down as it cools and loses momentum. It turns out it takes quite a lot of velocity to get out of the solar gravity field, and sometimes some of the loops don't make it. You can see hints of the same event in both the low temperature coronal movie and the high temperature coronal movie, which means not only that the 50,000 degree material was involved, but also 600,000 degree material, and coronal gases at over 2 million degrees were involved. From the Soho Lasco chronograph movies, we can see there have been two coronal mass ejections. The first was off the northwest limb and it was associated with that filament eruption that we just showed you. And the second one is a very impulsive event off the east limb, the origin of which is unknown. From the ACA theory, we can see that the temperature of the solar wind has dropped significantly, but so has the velocity while the densities remained relatively high. This means we are still in the slow speed solar wind stream. The auroral zones seem relatively quiet and the KP index has only been varying between 1 and 3. So in summary then, the X-ray background is at the B1 level, the sunspot number has increased slightly to 36, the radio sun intensity has dropped to 85 solar flux units, the solar wind speed has dropped to 350 kilometers per second with a density of about 5 protons per cubic centimeter and geospace conditions are rated as quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is that we've got a good chance of sea flares but a poor chance of M or X flares. The sunspot number will remain low but may inch a little higher as these regions develop. We've got a good chance of CMEs. The solar wind speed will probably inch a little higher as the high speed stream from that coronal hole in the western hemisphere of the sun starts to overtake us. 
However, the chances of getting a major geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours is fairly low. NOAA is predicting that the CME that happened a couple of days ago may hit the Earth's magnetosphere, so there's an outside possibility of at least increased storm conditions in geospace. In the longer term, there seems to be a moderate-sized region about to rotate over the northeast limb. And in fact, if you looked at the coronal movies earlier, right at the end, you can see some hints of it. And that may be the origin of that second coronal mass ejection that we saw earlier. We can check that out by going to the Stereo B data. Stereo B is trailing the Earth by 90 degrees, so in these pictures the Earth is to the right. The region that I'm talking about is just to the left of Sun Center, so just behind the Ar East limb. And indeed you can see there's some activity in that region, so that is very likely the origin of the coronal mass ejection. For more information on what's going on in the Sun, follow some of the links in the description box below. If you want to see earlier editions of the Sun today, go to my channel and they're all listed there, along with some other videos that you might find fun to watch. The answer to the first of the trivia questions is, I don't have the foggiest idea. I could find no reference to when Venus will next occult Regulus. Here's a challenge for the viewers to see if they can go out and find a reference that gives us that information. The answer to the second question, which is when the Moon will next occult Venus, that is in 2029. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.